see y'all doing today. Good. 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 Good Kind of sets the mindset where, like, kind of like the Boston College Notre Dame game that you know going into this week, or going into week week one of this year, that you know you're going to be the starter. So that's, that's, it's good knowing that. Sir, sure. have you made an uh, emphasis coming out here on the practice field this year compared to last year? Are you having a different mentality when you get out there with the guys when you're going through work? Has, has anything changed? Uh, I think the only thing that's changed is try to be more of a uh, more of a leader, trying to show that more of that leadership role, trying to be a little bit more vocal, kind of quiet guy. Kind of lead by example, but you know, I know the coaches, and you know, I'm trying to break my shell, try to be a little bit more vertical each and every day. What's the biggest thing you learned from your two starts last year, and how much, how beneficial is it that you've got two starts under your belt as you now go for the long haul this year? Uh, biggest things I probably learned from that is just how to prepare for a week going in as when you know you're your starter. Uh, going into the Notre Dame game, I knew I was going to be a starter, so that kind of helped me prepare. And coming in right now, coming in first fall camp, being being a starter for the Georgia game week one, that's basically what I learned is like how to prepare and how to be a starter and uh, how to take it up going lead into the first game. What is the biggest thing you learn in preparation and just all the details that go into something like that? Uh, biggest, shoot, probably the biggest thing I learned is this. How much time and effort you got to put in? I mean, being a starter, that I know that you know you're the leader of the offense. Being the quarterback, once you know you're starting week one, you're the leader of the offense. So you want to do everything in your power to be and make sure that you're ready to be able to lead the troops out in the offense and make sure that you're mentally prepared, that you put your team in the best position. So I think that's the biggest thing. You got a, quite a tall bunch of wide receivers out there. I mean, it's got to be Sir. you know fun to throw and catch with those guys. Talk about the, the development of guys like Ajo Ajo, who, mm -hmm. who seems to have taken a step up so far this year. Ajo Ajo, man, he's done a huge job. Huge. I'm super proud of him, man, for what he's did last year. From after last season, leading up all the way here to fall camp, he's made huge strides. He's been, you can see it out here in practice. He's balling, man, making great plays, going up and grabbing the ball, moving, running really, looking light on his feet. I mean, he looks really good. So, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for my brother, Joe. He hasn't been out here yet for ball camp, but what does Justin Ross bring to this offense? I mean, I think the whole world knows what Justin Ross brings. I mean, I think he's the best receiver in the country. I mean, Justin Ross is Justin Ross. I think that just speaks for itself. What did you learn from Charles Barkley the day, by the way? Oh, yeah, man. Shoot, well, uh, I had no clue Charles Barkley was showing up at the team meeting today. Coach Sweeney called me over. I was like, I want you to meet somebody. I heard, I knew it was going to be a guest speaker. I didn't know who it was, and I turned the corner. I'm like, oh, shoot, it's Charles <laughs> Barkley, man. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it's Debo, the paint, uh, the paint. So I'm like, that was super cool, getting to meet him, getting to hear what he said, and just all the stuff he had, and just all the knowledge he had. You know, that's just a, that's a Hall of Famer right there. I mean, two-time Olympic gold medalist, and then, shoot. I mean, man, he's just, he's a great basketball player. So just be able to hear his mindset, what he took from playing basketball, and then see if they can play that in football. You think he could post up Barkley? Uh, no, heck today, no. Barkley. Nah, 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 still. I mean, I give him his props. No, nah, I have no shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might play basketball, but I mean, he's he's an NBA player. I'm nowhere near that. <laughs> Probably golf better than that. Yeah, I mean, he sticks his swing. I mean, his, his swing was a little, a little different. But I mean, I'm not the best golfer at all, so I can't speak on my golf game. But I mean, I mean, I think I seen something on Instagram. He looked, he looked pretty he looked, good. He looked better. Now. That's what I'm saying. He looked good. So I know he took a couple swings in the golf center today, but I didn't get to see it. <laughs> Speaking of looking good, are you amazed at Tyson and how oh, good man, he looks sure. so far? I mean, I mean, I don't think I think everybody counted on him out except for him. I think, man, Tyson, man, I think, shoot, four months. I think it's been four months since the injury's happened, and he's out here doing seven-ons and doing almost everything out here. And I'm just super proud of him. You, know? you can tell for you can tell for, uh, the type of person Tyson is and the type of faith that he has, uh, the type of faith and love that he has for the Lord Jesus. And, and looking at him, he's just out here playing, and he's having fun, he's being a great teammate. I mean, that's all we can ask, man, he's just being a great person. Have you spent some time this offseason looking at Georgia's defense, or are you going to wait till you get closer to that? No, yeah, I know. I've been looking at Georgia's defense. Think? Yeah, they look great defense. I mean, it's got great players, a lot of people coming back. I mean, you got a great up front, great secondary, got a lot of trenches coming in. This is going to be a good game. When you, when you start with a caliber of opponent like that, do you think it sort of amps up the focus and attention to detail in, in camp, just knowing you have a smaller margin for error, you know, it's right off the bat? I think so. I think a little bit. But I think, I think for the most part, I think we're just all excited to be able to play the first game. And then knowing that we have a quality opponent in Georgia, a real high caliber team, I think it just makes it that much more fun going through both camp. You, I'm sure a lot will be made of the fact that you've got two you know, high school rival QBs, Southern California guys, mm -hmm. certainly Alabama. Looks like it's going to have one as well. It, do you make anything of the, the sort of California QBs coming to the southeast? Is it is it a narrative that um, has legs to it? Do you feel like back home there's people that, that do recruiting more on national stage now? I think it just puts perspective on California, uh, Southern California quarterbacks. I mean, the Trinity League itself, I mean, 
think we have three stars with Bryce Young, me and JT Daniels all come from the same high school league, not just the same area in Southern California, but the same league. So I think that just puts a perspective on how good that uh, high school league is and how well our two high school programs have prepared us to come in and play in college football. Do you think there's something to sort of the under JT is sort of, I would guess, Bill Defense would refer to him as quirky, maybe? <laughs> Do you think there's something to that sort of Southern California? Are, are Southern, are Southern Ca California QBs different than everybody else? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think maybe we have a little bit more. I think just we have a little bit, just a little different than people, I guess. But I feel like that's what every quarterback from coming from where we're from. I think everyone's different. And you could just say that. You could probably say that for every quarterback coming from somewhere else. What did you learn from Trevor about how to prepare? for a game. Did you come here thinking you knew how to prepare for a game and were there any differences in what you thought you knew versus what you learned last year how to get ready? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you knew how to prepare for a game for high school and you learned those uh, those basic materials. But when you get to college, it's a different level. You learn from Coach Tree, you learn from Trevor, you learn from experienced guys here that have been here for a while and you just kind of pick up on things. It's just different things you have to your toolbox. A couple of examples? Uh, just just, spend, just spending a lot of time in the film room. Just how much time you need to spend in the film room, stuff like that. DJ, how did you describe your relationship with Paul Diaz, and how do you feel like he kind of takes you to where you are Coach now? Diaz? Mm -hmm. I love Coach Diaz, man. That's, I mean, I mean, Coach Diaz, man, he's kind of almost like a father figure to me. I mean, I, was, uh, shoot, I rode with him three years, four years, going into high school, rode with him every single day. I probably spent more time with him than probably any other coach. I mean, I drove to school with him, uh, rode home from him. We just had a different daily talk, so me and Coach Diaz, man, we're super close. We love Coach Diaz. What's the best piece of advice you think he gave you? Uh, I think the best piece of advice that he's probably given me is just, uh, shoot. I think the best, this deserve is just, I think some of the best piece of advice is how to be, it's how to be a good husband, how to be a good father, how to treat your kids, how to be a good husband, just how to treat your wife. I think that's some different examples like that. You view your sort of personality in a locker room as much different than Trevor, like the way that you kind of approach leadership and the way that you kind of approach yeah, bonding with your guys and interacting with them is it is it much different than how Trevor did it? I think it is a little bit different. I think we're just because we're just two different personalities, two different guys. So I think yeah, it's different. We're definitely a little bit different in that different aspect. So, how, how so? Like, is there anything that's uh, kind of noticeable to you? I mean, we're both laid back. I mean, I think it's just that I'm kind of have a I listen. I might listen to a little different music. I might talk a little bit different than Trevor. It's stuff like that. But I think it's because I'm just DJ. He's Trevor. So, so, so you're saying Trevor has bad taste in music? No, no, no. No, I didn't say that. But I mean. I think it's just, we're just two different people. I know we have two different mentalities. I mean, we just, I think it's just where we grew up in just two different locations. We grew up in Georgia, I grew up in California. It's just two different, it's just, we're just two different people. Is Brian, it fair Brian for says, people to, what? Brian says you, um, you're a little different because you come from California. Like, mm -hmm. So what's different that you bring? Not, not, I mean, I'm talking about just, you know, outside of football. What are the uh -huh. things he's talking about? Uh, I mean, too. Uh, it might be a little. I mean, from South California, I'm kind of laid back. I think that's kind of kind of how it is out there. More laid back, a little chill. Might say food here and there. Might say a little different, <laughs> little different slangs and stuff like that. But I think it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of how, I mean, just where I grew up. I mean, it's just, there's not a lot of people out here from Southern California out here in the South, especially at Clips. So I think it's just a little different flavor. So if you had to actively sort of force yourself to be more vocal, when that's really sort of not. Really part uh, of your personality. Yeah, I'm just trying mean, just try to be more vocal. I mean, yeah. I'm a vocal guy, but I mean, not really though. So it's just a little hard sometimes. You know, I, I like to lead by example, but I know as in the role that I'm in right now, I have to be a lot more vocal than, than I, I like to be. Is it fair for people to compare you to Trevor Lawrence? I mean, he was the number one overall pick in the draft. He won a national championship in the draft. Is it okay for people to compare you because you're the guy that comes after him? Uh, I mean, I think it was just shoot. I think everyone. Trevor Lawrence, he's probably the best quarterback to ever play college football. And I think everyone should give their respect to Trevor. I mean, I'm just DJ. So, I mean, I don't think there's nothing that you should be compared about. Trevor's Trevor, and I'm DJ. What do you miss most about Southern California while you're out here? Aside from his family and stuff. Shoot, food. Food and the weather. I mean, I'm, I'm dripping right now. I'm sweating. <laughs> I mean, it's super humid right now. Uh, I feel like the food and the weather. Did you what did you weigh at your heaviest? And how did you get to lose that weight? What habits did you have to change? Eating, man. I think I love to eat. I love to eat. I love <laughs> sweets. Uh, I just love to eat. I mean, I, I think probably shoot. I probably got up to like 258 during last season. I think right now I'm probably like 248, 247, and I feel a lot more in shape this year. So no more late night snacks. Is that what you said? Nah, I'm just trying to cut down. Try to cut down a little bit more running. A little bit more running. Yeah, it's been good. You'll be able to keep it off with Bojangles in the picture now? I think so. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think I will. Man, Will Taylor, man, exceptional athlete. I mean, 
he's a student of the game. This is what he brings to the field. Just not uh, not just football wise, but just like him as a leader. You can tell he's a leader already, and how young he is, and he just does a really good job. Can you talk to any about his baseball decision? And uh, you track that enough? I haven't talked to him too much about the baseball decision and stuff like that. But I know he's a great player. I mean, I mean he, I know he wants to play both, and I'm just excited that he's here on our team. Glad he's here. Is there anything that he surprised you about? Or yesterday he surprised or Saturday? I didn't realize he was as fast as he is. That kind of surprised me a little bit. Anything that kind of caught you by? I mean, I knew he was super fast. I mean, I looked up like his baseball 60, 60 yard dash on scene. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, he's got to be fast. So I, I was not surprised at all. I was expecting that. When did you first meet Bryce Young? Sure, Bryce Young. Um, maybe seventh grade. I mean, he grew up probably seventh, eighth grade. I think it was the first time I met him back in youth football. Yeah. So but did you guys each have kind of a reputation back then, or was that still a little bit like nobody? Was quite sure what to make of y'all. Uh, I think we just we're just both two good quarterbacks from Southern California. I know coming out of eighth grade, going in high school, I know we both had. I think we both had offers, D1 offers coming out of eighth grade. So that was things that might have been one thing. Did you? Did it, was it nice for you to have? I mean, despite him playing for a rival, to kind of have this guy who was going through a lot of the same things that you were from the same area that you were. You know, trying to play at that same level that you were. Like, was it good to sort of have a uh, a foil, I guess, to some extent? Oh. Uh. Shoot. I mean, I guess so. I mean, you like, repeat that question again. Like, I, mean, did, like, I don't know if you necessarily call him a rival, but, but did you uh, kind no, of look at it as like a nice thing to have somebody to kind of compare nah, yourself against? No, nah, I wouldn't call it a rival. I mean, I, we were we were first, we were friends. We yeah. trained together. We were friends, and we just pushed each other when we worked out and stuff like that. I mean, he's a great player, and he's gonna have a great season here. I'm excited to watch him. You, you guys ever talk about like, no, oh, I'll see you in you know national championship game? Nah, we just, <laughs> shoot, we just talk. We just have conversations. Just talk about your homies, so. Jordan McFadden was known us the other day that, uh, that that Will Shipley has already emerged as one of the team leaders. Is, how, how unusual is that uh, for, for a freshman in, in your mind? Uh, I mean, it's super. I mean, Will Shipley, he's one of those guys that can definitely, he's definitely a leader. I mean, he asserts himself in the locker room, the way he treats the classroom, the way he's on the field. I mean, he's a big, big time leader, and I'm happy for him. You feel like you've established a pretty good chemistry with him as definitely. far as the, the yeah, mesh, the, the exchange and everything? Yeah, 100% connection, throwing. I mean, we've done a really good job. He's really good. With all that talent in the running back room, how fierce is that competition? Um, competition to me. We have a lot of running backs, man. It's real deep, real deep backfield. It's gonna be really exciting. So, to be able to have all those people this year is gonna be really good. Did you with the name, image, likeness stuff? How does that relationship start? How's it work? And what what's expected of you? Oh, uh, I mean. Uh, for me, I just let my team handle it. I have a marketing team, I let them handle it, my mom handle it, and then they do all this stuff for me. I just, I'm just, i just there, so I just all handle it. So all the relationship is through them, through my marketing team. Do you have like fun doing it, the shoot, photo shoots or whatever, you know, other stuff that you're posting to social media? Like, is it? Oh, a yeah, no, definitely, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's super cool in my off time, I get to do it and stuff like that. I love it, it's cool. Is it like a good, do you feel like it's a good opportunity? I mean, not just for you, but for all college guys to kind of show a little bit more yeah. who they are instead of just hey you know I'm, yeah I'm playing football but I, this is 100%. this is all the yeah, stuff you get to show a little different personality of yourself uh, and I think it's cool for all football players to be able to do that 100 percent you get some free chicken for your offensive lineman I mean we're working on that that's what, that's what we're working <laughs> on yes, sir I know Nick uh, said Bryce is closing in on seven figures with NIL already mm -hmm. um, are you <laughs> anywhere near that number and what do you what do you make of that. Uh, I think that's great for Bryce Young, man. I mean, shoot, I mean, I'm super happy for him. Shoot, make all the money he can, man. You know, right? I'm super happy for him and his family. How about you? How much you making? Uh, I cannot speak on that, sir. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just here. His accountant has advised him. I just, shoot, I'm just here playing football, man. I'm just trying to focus on that. That's my main goal. First, to be a student, then be an athlete, and then I just love my everybody else having the NIL piece. But somebody will come to you and say it'd be cool to or, or put this on Twitter and that kind of stuff. I mean, that comes from other people kind of directing you, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Any of the other receivers that in particular that have made a jump since last year that you noticed early on? I think when we talked about it was Joe Joe. He made a huge jump from spring to now. Yes, sir. Oh, Matt, sorry if you've already been asked this, but Brian Brzee was talking about your first start uh, before the Boston College game. He asked you, like, are you nervous? And you said, no, I don't ever get nervous. Um, but why is that? And have you ever gotten nervous, like, back in that sixth grade, seventh grade? Uh, growing up, no, I don't know. But yeah, I, I loved it. I love it. I love the bright lights. I love it. Uh, and then for me, football is just not like playing a football game is not nervous. I don't get nervous playing that. I mean, for me, 
be a nurse is, I mean, is when you have a family, you gotta provide for them. You have no, no source of income. You gotta go get some money. You gotta be able to provide for them. That's where I think is that's where you get nervous, and that's where, that's that's where I think nervous is, and you become nervous. Not playing football. Football's fun. This is all fun. This is all funny games. I love it. Yeah. The defense you go up against every day does that help in terms of? Never to be surprised by anything. 100%. They throw a lot of stuff out there, and it's great. 100%. I mean, they throw everything in the kitchen sink at us, so it's really cool. How much to go in somewhere like Boston, where they are a national powerhouse as a high school program, kind of help you for this stage right now? Uh, I think it helps me a lot. Uh, I mean, they prepared me in a great chance. Coach Lowe, I mean, Coach Negro, they've done a lot of great things in me for college, so I'm super happy I went there. When was the first time you, like, realized you throw a football different than everybody else? Uh, shoot, I don't know, maybe in youth football? I think that might have been about it. <laughs> so maybe you're out there with like 10-year-olds and chucking at 50 yards? and Yeah, no, I threw the ball <clears throat> super far when I was a young 